there are some machineries and other, uh, 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 I think, energy consuming equipments that require 24 into 7 power supply and which can be only taken from uh, conventional energies like coal and oil, that is, which are available in abundance and it's fast at depleting. Conventional energy is easily and found everywhere, that is and anywhere, which are available in abundance and it's fast easily available, available and therefore we can conventional energy is like easily found everywhere. Use that energy where we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can conventional energy is easily available and use that energy where we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in abundance and it's fast easily available and therefore we can convert it in and then bringing it to the summer power plant and burning it out, generating steam and then generating power. A lot of issues are there. And, and then bringing it to the summer power plant and burning uh, it out, followed by generating steam and, and, and then lot of effort power also. A lot of issues are there. In in and then for really long the time, time to basically uh, now, followed by generating steam and then lot of effort power also. A lot of issues are there. In in and then for really long the time to basically now, followed by generating steam and then lot of effort power also. Slowly the generation energy and then for really long the time generation steam and then lot of effort power also. Slowly the generation energy and then for really long the time generation steam and then lot of effort power also. Slowly the generation energy and then for really long the time generation steam and then lot of effort power also. Basically, uh, we can uh, really make some, uh, no, basically, uh, usable. We can in such uh, that we use really more some and uh, conventional no, energies less. So conventional energies can be used in such use, that can use really more some because and, uh, Conventional energies can be used to such that burning of oil has really moved as always been conventional energies can be used to such that burning of oil has really moved as always been conventional energies can be used to such that burning of oil has really moved as always been conventional energies can be used to such that Keep the power station working every time we need to keep huge amount of fuel in reserve is yes. and this can be expensive and occupy a lot of space so, so keep the power station working these are some time we need constraints that we are thinking about in terms yes. of and this can be expensive and, and occupy a lot of space so, so keep the power station working. Yeah, these are some uh, constraints that we are thinking about we can understand that and this can be expensive and occupy a lot of space so keep the power station working these are some constraints that we are thinking about we can understand that and this can be better that these are renewable energy sources and we just spoke about before that they basically comprises of solar, wind, biomass, tidal, geothermal, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Amongst them, I'll speak about them how it is being coming into picture. 
because major uh, thrust area of my teacher's lecture will be about microgrid renewable energy penetration to it and basically making power plant planning I and mean, peak power saving and all those things but having said that uh, now when we are talking about renewable energy it has to have some advantage because it's going to substitute the conventional energy sources how are they so in bullet points five points have been carried forward in this slide first a fuel supply that never runs out truly because sunlight and water and wind and biomass and even geothermal resources all themselves are naturally created available in abundance and can be replenished very fastly therefore this never runs out of shortage zero carbon emission perhaps the most significant benefit of renewable energy is that there is no greenhouse gases that means there's no burning of coal and there's no you know exertion and with the exertion being zero pollutants created in the process very less therefore this happens to have the most significant part of its benefit cleaner air and water renewable energy creates no pollution waste or contamination risk to air and water cheaper form of electricity with the rapid growth of renewable energy over the last 10 years solar and wind power are now the cheapest sources of electricity in many parts of the country renewable energy creates new jobs with increasing focus on global warming and many government settings ambitious carbon reduction goals one of the surprising renewable energy advantage is that it has quickly become a major source of new job growth true because lots of players have come forward they are exploring <laughs> solar and wind based renewable energy sources and since these are in large scale generation process nowadays it has really opened up uh, when avenues for the younger generations to work in these areas get jobs and secure themselves so really it is a substitute but in making let's see maybe another 10 to 15 years this will really come up very fast and can overtake and overcome the disadvantage of the conventional energy sources then thereby reducing the carbon footprints and thereby making this earth more habitable i should say there are certain disadvantages of renewable energy sources as we go forward yeah it has got high capital cost electrical electricity production can be unreliable as all you know is that <laughs> the intermittent nature of sunlight wind and water's availability what are we are talking about basically about mini and micro hydel in north and i mean the hilly areas and within indian subcontinent we are talking about the northeastern states and the you know uh, upper part of the himalayan uh, ridges where uh, states like uttarakhand uh, and uh, uh, uttar pradesh the upper part and you know himachal pradesh these few places even in ladakh areas even uh, the, we have mini and micro hydel power plants which are mostly used and that were in, in further in the northeastern states like arunachal in assam and in meghalaya and lot of areas we have been using this and this these are there but you know you are dependent on the in the natural flow of the water from the upper ridges to down flow and the water head has to be a constant water head to rotate the turbine at a given speed so that your generator is able to generate power which is very unreliable because over the period of 12 months you do not expect every time that there will be a flow of water so you need to map up the resources first and then you need to have an accessible road towards that only then you can install a uh, you know mini micro hydel power plant in those areas and then you start generating the electricity now after generating you may not uh, be able to generate a very reliable uh, 50 uh, 40 or 330 uh, volt uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I just got a phone call. I had to delete it. Yeah, so you cannot get such kind of uh, uninterruptible uh, power supply from uh, those kind of resources you are talking about. Same goes with the intermittent nature of sunlight and wind as well. So therefore, this is very unreliable, or I should say, unpredictable. Energy storage is a challenge. Yeah, even if you have basically due to intermittent nature of the renewables, they need to form. They need. forms of energy storage to capture and release electricity in a consistent and controlled way uh, because of the fact that since uh, if i go by solar it's basically a daytime generation there is no night time generation therefore and the electricity requirement is dominant in the night time or in the evening time therefore you need to not only store energy but also need to flow into the grid also because the requirements are high so therefore it becomes a challenge right it's impacted by environmental condition the efficiency of renewable energy systems are also depends on their locations and surrounding environment for example wind turbines are only effective in large open areas with strong and consistent wind 
which limits their viability to specific regions. Renewables still have carbon footprints. Yeah, they have carbon. We, we don't say that they don't have truly written because uh, you know what? Uh, renewable energy is so, like solar panels and wind turbines. They need mechanical production and those also need again, power. Uh, we are using conventional power right now to manufacture such panels and such turbines. Obviously, by burning coal and therefore uh, we are basically still having some carbon footprints while manufacturing renewable energy resources. Having said all these things uh, as, as a part of introduction to the renewable energies and the conventional energies and comparing both of them, we are right now basically giving you a very pictorial view of what the renewable energy sources in India is all about. And uh, I don't want to drag the lecture for a very long time. The basic idea is to make you understand that at 2021-22, the percentage of renewable energy power generation is around 21% uh, of the total generation of India. And having said that, uh, I'll just go to the next slide where you can see that <coughs> the grid connected total in, uh, power, including the non-renewable and renewable, are given here in terms of the share in percentage. And the renewables subtotal in the bottom part, you can see, is around 37%. So in, with, with the basics of understanding the fact that we have really uh, gone almost uh, around uh, one third of the power generation of India into the renewable energy part right now, so you can see that the challenges of uh, the renewable energy being more consistent, more cost effective, and having a better uh, you know, controllability of usage of such power supply is of utmost importance in terms of the area of research and the domain we are speaking about today. So this basically gives you a very brief idea uh, why we are more focused on this and why my topic has been chosen from my end about microgrid and uh, renewable energy for peak load uh, shaving. So that's the reason because it is almost one third of the power generation right now in India. Within the next 10 years, who knows, we may see around 50 50 share of the both. And therefore, the both AC and DC grids will be actually taking care of the entire power distribution and the network uh, feasibility. And thereby, <laughs> our understanding of such situations becomes more inevitable. Having said that, off grid renewable energy installed capacity is graphically represented here. And you can see uh, the most important part of the wind and solar is that it is almost a vertical uh, you know lift along with the hydro now in these hydro part there are certain uh, areas where uh, the leap has been made and these leaps are basically with respect to mini and micro hydro power plants in the northeastern regions mostly <coughs> and the sub himalayan regions of india and if you compare the same with the wind and solar although we have not reached to that extent but you can see around uh, the wind has almost almost in the in the in the lower part of the hydro blue line it has almost reached uh, about one third of the hydro part and solar is almost touching the base part of the hydro so that means we are uh, you know if you sectorize from 160 uh, to 100 to 60 and to zero so you see zero to 60 it's almost solar, uh, renewable energy sources from 60 to 100 it is the gap with band gap which needs to be you know right now we are looking forward and from 100 to 160 it's what we are looking for for the next 10 to 15 years now by which we will be actually uh, replacing the entire uh, renewable energy uh, in from the conventional energy part so that's the point well taken and this is what we are having a state-wise <coughs> solar power plant installed capacity in india and this is taken uh, and been shown to you in the two columns having the two uh, the states being represented in the leftmost columns and adjoining the rightmost columns are giving you the data of their megawatt generations in terms of till the 30th june 2022 and uh, 176 is west bengal where we are speaking for and uh, i find karnataka and rajasthan uh, can see uttar pradesh gujarat uh, states like madhya pradesh tamil nadu uh, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, all in the range of uh, above 5,000. That's why what I meant to say is, so you can see what kind of advancement these states are making, and uh, the researches in these areas are inevitable, as I've been told, tell you. And states like Orissa, West Bengal, Bihar, Assam, you can read out through the statistics. Delhi, for that matter, Uttarakhand, uh, uh, Chhattisgarh, impacts are very less. And things are opening up out on these states and Kerala also. And we, we look forward for such states to, you know, build up heavy generation capacities in the 
near future and hereby you know addressing the india's power requirement a steady growth in power requirement and uh, catering the demand from time to time and mostly for the peak load requirements are being fed through such kind of renewable energy resources uh, i'll not go by this because these are a bit statistical data which is almost available in everywhere uh, so this is about wind the earlier where was solar and this is wind <coughs> wind so you can see that uh, uh, as on date west bengal uh, has done nothing uh, to any contribute for but again states like tamil nadu gujarat maharashtra karnataka rajasthan andhra pradesh madhya pradesh these are major players big states playing having lot of land and they can you know went forward plus uh, the intention has to be you know very much positive in these natures only then you can be you know self sufficient and also give things to others that's what should be the major uh, area of understanding so now we'll come to the state of west bengal and we'll have just a glimpse of it because after having said all these things i will just move to micro grid so renewable energy where it stands right now in west bengal because i'm speaking on for an fdp organized by bc uh, engineering college so happens to be something to talk about the state itself so so far around 240 numbers of schools have been served with a cumulative capacity of 2.4 megawatt peak in two phases of power generation based on the success of the school program thousands of schools have been taken up to provide grid connected rooftop solar photovoltaic system each of capacity of 10 kilowatt peak and the project is nearing completion yeah these are data from taken from webred actually uh, sites and all solar vt water heating system for government uh, hostels yeah <laughs> we are taking care of Uh, such uh, projects are being taken care in in from the government of west bengal side and uh, almost uh, these are coming and happens to be reducing the use of geysers and, and you know power consumptions from those what i mean to say is that these are basically nothing but you know reducing the carbon greenhouse gases and you know uh, generating your or rather you should say shifting towards green energy resources thereby uh, solar water heating systems being effectively introduced into the government hostels and etc uh, we have a 10 megawatt solar project at uh, bhajangad which is basically near in nadia district of of, of west bengal uh, which is around about 50 crores uh, has been invested out there and it is being uh, connected to a nearby like 33 kv by 11 kv substation uh, through a 33 kv line route of around 11 kilometers the execution is already in place and the work is still going on but it is there 10 megawatt solar project in west bengal 1 megawatt solar project at ganga sagar proposed by the project proposal for installation of a ground mounted solar photovoltaic project capacity of 1 megawatt at ganga sagar by webreader uh, followed by certain grid connected rooftop solar photovoltaic systems at 18 colleges of cumulative capacity of 340 kilowatt peak followed by all these in district courts in, you know in uh, alternative energy office that is bigalpo shakti bhavan and west bengal judiciary academy at dpl uh, durgapur projects limited i have stayed in durgapur projects limited dpl quarters as my better half was uh, working out there as a resident manager she left the job and i have a very close associate with the dpl plus, uh, officials out there lot many people are uh, from ju as alumni and i have been with them and i have been in touch with these kind of solar projects out there with them which is around 200 kilowatt peak and happens to reduce a bit of the carbon footprints again and you know contributing towards the uh, green energy shift of the country's policy uh, this is one private player we are talking about cesc which we are all knowing of calcutta uh, electricity uh, part so they are basically known as crescent power limited in tamil nadu and they have installed a 15 uh, megawatt uh, installed capacity uh, power generation system uh, solar projects in tamil nadu and this is expected to be ready almost in by december this is december going on so i can't say right now what is the state and also uh, the same company of csc is trying to you know uh, has said it has commissioned its first microgrid with floating solar and battery energy storage system on a trial basis in south 24 parkanas district a model that will help in crisis management and uninterrupted power supply with green energy this is the catch line crisis management and uninterrupted power supply so the challenge of the present power penetration of renewable energy is to make a crisis management okay and thereby floating a microgrid a microgrid with floating solar and battery energy storage system and which is on a trial basis and you know they are going to come up with the final solution 
where this will only be you know replenishing the crisis part only that is peak load management or there is a blackout or the fault layout in anywhere in the network can be taken care by so this has been taken care by cac in the south 24 pagnas area yeah uh, i have initiated to speak something about the uh, railways also because they have been a major power consuming uh, uh, you know sector and uh, i happen to have been recently addressing uh, on 14th of this month i went to the indian uh, i mean eastern railway headquarters under the umbrella of the gm of uh, the eastern railway who has had invited me to speak on again uh, the these areas of renewable energy uh, it was basically energy conservation day celebrated by railways and uh, while doing that actually i had tried to share some slides out here and <clears throat> you can see that even the railways are going for green uh, energy resources uh, although uh, the the, uh, the freight that is the transport part is still in the lower side but you can see the the electrical uh, freight part and the electrification part they are picking up very fast and we are basically uh, almost uh, reaching as high as uh, the percentage is almost 77 and 65.5 percent and whereas the diesel part being taken by is almost 23 still it is there and therefore uh, this kind of electrification part is being done uh, keeping in mind that the consumption of electricity has to be reduced as much as possible uh, having said that uh, the reduction in diesel consumption now has reduced can see in the financial year 2021 till january it is being shown and it's in uh, million liters and is on 1092 it's very much reduced and uh, frankly speaking when i was with them I, i was with the gm the agm the chief engineers the drms of the entire eastern railway panel hods and phs and the, the entire officers lot were sitting listening to me and they were again discussing their way of solutions and then i came to know that uh, almost the south eastern railways they are, whenever you go to the howrah station or maybe santragachi station and you know all these places you can see that the trains are terminating there or going to start off from there so i have also observed because i recently happened to go to delhi around, around six days back and i came back on 21st so i saw that in the discussion also i found that all the trains that are plied from the car shed to the station and back are being done by uh, basically electric uh, electric engines and not by the diesel uh, locomotives electric lo lo locomotives and therefore reducing the consumption of the electricity of diesel i should say and the locomotives that are being drawn being taken care by the tractions are the electric locomotives they are being used uh, but still better that there is no diesel usage and therefore there is less amount of you know uh, all these greenhouse gases emission and all those things so they are trying to and then they have planned up to you know uh, design for which rds is doing i had happened to discuss that also of renewable energy based uh, drive system that will basically at least used to ply that rakes empty rakes from the car shed to the station buildings and back and almost all the platforms are on the process of the sheds will be converted into rooftop solar photovoltaic system and from there the local uh, non essential i should say non traction loads will be scattered thereby there is a you know a big shift from the use of conventional energy to renewable energy uh, this is something to do with their railways is what they are doing they have around for 20 they have a, a potential of 20 gigawatts of solar power and they are planning to use their vacant lands to set up such uh, power plants where they can use it for traction power uh, railways initially planned to set up a 3 gigawatt solar plants and on the unused vacant lands in three phases these are the three phases which i talked about <laughs> their part of the renewable energy management is being taken by remcl this is a like a, a, you know ppp mod uh, railway uh, organization but it's a private organization in company limited and they are basically looking into the entire matter of this uh, things they are coming into touch with the electricity utility companies state governments and the power sectors and railways exploring renewable energy as their one of their basically revenue generating areas uh, i'll skip these uh, i'll just once uh, show you that these are basically what the solar parks in beena in madhya pradesh being done by the indian railways which is generating on 1.7 megawatt pilots solar project for powering the traction network of indian railways and 2 megawatt pilot solar project on land uh, along the railway track at diwana haryana and it is feeding the power through a 132 kv <coughs> substation for railway electric traction network uh, they have 16 kilowatt solar power plant has been installed as platform shelter <coughs> sorry 
at Shabiba, uh, Shahibaba Railway Station at Central Electronics Limited. This is a first of its kind initiative in railways where a solar power plant is doubling as a shelter. This will reduce the combined cost of platform shelter plus rooftop solar plants and provide solar power to, the, to meet the non-traction demand. Just now I told you about. And Indian Railways has a wind energy installation too across the country, including 56.4 megawatts wind project in Maharashtra. And you can see 21 in Tamil Nadu and 26 in Rajasthan. Uh, yeah, this is the latest one, which I have also witnessed. And fortunately, this uh, thing was being shown. So they have in Eastern Railway Kanchanapada workshop has converted a two <coughs> overage memo coaches into a dual voltage green tower uh, car, car, which is called a Novon Mesh, which can uh, operate in dual voltage system, 25 kV OHE, as well as battery operated in unwired sections. <clears throat> so you can see that these kind of initiatives even the railways are taking so that they basically shift into the green energy part and as well as they're trying to use these kind of uh, power driven uh, sources uh, so that uh, we can basically you know use the renewable energy sources for the non-tractional part also so thereby reducing the use of the conventional power like uh, solar coal and natural gas and oil and hydro power in the se sectors uh, having said that, uh, I will now, now shift my uh, basic intention of the, my lecture of understanding that since this has been a big shift, <coughs> therefore, uh, the renewable energy integration to the grid becomes inevitable and we can see that that is being already done. So what we are doing is that we are trying to basically uh, gear up, scale up our power generation from renewable energy and thereby integrating it to the existing grid so that we can use it towards our AC load. So this is basically a schematic block diagram of how things are. So you can see that there are two <laughs> resources that are being spoken for, solar and wind. There's a charge controller. Uh, from there, we are having a DC layout from DC to uh, this is towards the DC load, it goes back. There's one layout which goes to the battery bank. From the battery bank, you have a bidirectional inverter, which is basically either it will be DC to AC or maybe DC to DC that way. And then with, there's a transfer switch. There's a transfer switch, which basically takes care of this as well as it switches uh, to that AC load. It gives power or it can switch off towards the generator part. And the generator part is a DG and the controller art of the DG is nothing but an automatic gener generator starter, which is again fed by these kind of renewable energy sources. And once this diesel generator starts with a variable speed diesel generator, this will can again feed up to the AC load in case if there is some issue with this part. And this is basically between the transfer switch. But in having said that, this is a self-sustained renewable energy based uh, uh, power generating unit that basically generates the power and transmits it to the existing AC loads. But you have also a small bit of a DC load connected out here. So therefore, you have both AC and DC load being fed through. This is how the renewable energy integration is being done. Now, this AC load doesn't mean it is directly connected to a load. Maybe it is connected to a grid or a bus. And this can be an AC bus and this can be a DC bus. And other side, there can be loads connected through. So you go by that and you have the voltage levels being spoken for 48 volts uh, for uh, 24 volt DC and then 230 volts AC. And then the signal line being shown by the dotted line. So this comprises the entire block diagram of renewable energy integration with load demand this basically replicates a small microgrid this is a this is a basically renewable energy source part connected to the loads through grids now if you have an isolated load and only an isolated source and having this in totality it basically makes a microgrid so what is basically this is a small scale energy grid renewable energy is gener generation and storage technologies are integrated with multi converter devices designed through ac or dc and accomplishes reliability, efficiency, and quality power supply. Structure consists of micro sources or distributed generators, as I showed you. Flexible loads, yeah, there are lots of loads which can be intermittently used. You can use a you know a water pump at your residence through a through a renewable energy sources. So therefore, what happens is that you have the flexibility of using that water pump to you know store your water from the uh, below uh, tank to the overhead tank. And using it over the period of 24 hours at any time of your choice and use. So those kind of loads we are calling as flexible loads. Your washing machines and home that can be used on times when you need to, you know, have you have time and 
you need it can be in odd hours of the day or it can be on the night also you can just start the machine and keep it down it will dry down and you know so these are flexible loads so what we are trying to tell is that i just give some example just to make you all understand i hope a lot of people are getting through what i'm speaking about but uh, the structure basically consists of distributed generation that is renewable energy sources flexible loads distributed energy storage devices a control system basically to control between the voltage and the frequency and the power generation quality mitigations followed by point of common coupling components which basically comprises of the dc and ac bus system connected to the same microgrid uh, uh, area so connected to a low voltage distribution network capable of operating in a controlled coordinated manner in both the connected to the utility grid or islanded states or islanded uh, uh, mode of operation uh, this is the micro grid structure uh, micro grid components so you have what flexible energy sources and you have non flexible energy sources you can see this i am moving the cursor out here i hope you can see this and this is a time based program this is basically i will speak for these are something other things these are basically for flexible energy sources you have flexible energy management part which comprises of the storage part the renewable energy source and the other uh, the dr programs we are basically talking about uh, the uh, time based program and incentive based programs these are basically uh, how to manage these renewable energy sources and with the support of the storage system using these programs you can actually have a smart management in the microgrid structure itself and for non flexible energy sources you have straight away fed by the renewable energy and therefore this is not that smart this is intelligent part and this is a non intelligent part having said that if i go by this particular uh, i should say a presentation this uh, basically has three yellow uh, uh, i should say part controllable generation energy storage and non controllable generation or, or limit these are connected to wind photovoltaic and hydro and this is a point of common coupling you have a microgrid manager somebody who is a scheduler sitting here and he has a storage part also understanding what is how much is stored when to charge when to discharge how to use them and you have a controllable generation which basically calls of for micro turbines diesel engines load banks and a hydro power uh, basically into into the picture this is basically all about the simplified microgrid system <clears throat> now if you are talking about that intelligent part that i was talking about there was a smart part or intelligent part the schematics of intelligent microgrid with different components you can see that we have encircled with a, a dotted line this is that set of the microgrid which is being connected through a point of common coupling and you have basically a microgrid central controller this is a coupling transformer and uh, there are circuit breakers on the different part um, and bidirectional relays and you have bidirectional power flow and you have the dg uh, distributed generation sources like the solar photovoltaic the wind turbine and you have the prosumers and these prosumers are nothing but people or the consumers which they do not consume power but rather they tell to the intelligent central controller that i don't need power at this point of time or the my rooftop solar power plant whatever it is generating already my battery at the home is charged therefore the excess generation can be fed into the bus basically or the uh, power distribution line and by doing so basically they are not only consuming they are generating power so therefore producing power so therefore they will be known as prosumers so when i go to office i have a smart uh, system at my home which tells that i my power requirement right now is zero and therefore i i i basically fix up the time when i will not be available and the power that will be generated at my rooftop can be sent to the power line and to the utility grid and by doing so actually at that point of time i become a prosumer i am producing and when i come back in the evening what i do is that basically i start consuming now having done that over a period of 30 days the utility sector comes forward and tells you that how much you have basically utilized and i mean you have consumed and how much you have delivered on that basis we will call it as a net metering system through which you will be able to understand how much power generation you have done and how much power you have consumed and therefore you will be being billed accordingly and you will be paid and you will be having a rebate and having said that that will basically help in the entire power management now power management happens to be something that is of utmost importance because of the intermittent nature of the renewable energy sources plus the stress that comes up during the peak hours that is where we are basically looking forward how to manage these things so 
uh, i'll just go by uh, a bit of more classification understanding of the microgrid so you can see that this is a microgrid classification being done based on size application operation distribution system architecture distribution configuration scenario and sources and all these are connected in this or a vertical manner so the small the size comprises of small medium and large and the range and <coughs> ranging are given uh applications like premium power loss reduction and resilience operation is grid connected handling uh, handling and that the transients and standalone distribution system having dc microgrid ac microgrid and hybrid microgrids architecture consisting of radial grid configuration ring grid configuration and mechanical type configuration distribution configuration com comprises of single phase three phase and three phase neutral scenario can be residential industrial and commercial sources can be diesel renewable and hybrid comprising entire this makes one microgrid classification so you can understand we have so many uh, sub classifications and having that you have to design an ai based system that can take care of all these i should say uh, 18 uh, scenarios and from that you will have to really generate a, cl a control classification types which can basically give you a most reliable and most uh, sustainable uh, developed microgrid for local use as well as grid connected mode of use having said that we have two types of microgrids one is an ac microgrid which has all renewable energy sources and loads connected to a common ac bus classified according to the distribution as single phase three phase without neutral and three phase with neutral points but it has a difficulty in control and operation in terms that's why we need uh, basically uh, uh, monopolar bipolar and homopolar uh, bidirectional power flow controllers i'll speak about that a little bit later uh, we also have dc microgrids these are basically again in the dc microgrid we have three types monopolar bipolar and homopolar high reliability and efficiency and convenience in being connected to the different distributed energy resources complex uh, costly and immature protection components so this is about the dc microgrid as you can see the resources are being connected through uh, dc to dc ac to dc and this is again dc to dc converters through a dc bus another side you have dc to ac uh, converter which is giving you to the ac loads and these are basically dc direct loads which you can you know plug in and use through uh, like e vehicles and all and thereby you have and also you have the bus with through the breaker and you just convert it to the main grid and put it for long distance transmission uh, we have hybrid micro we have both you have ac subgrid you have dc subgrid you have a hybrid microgrid having interlink converter between ac and dc grids bidirectional flow from both and you have a converter so ac system will directly convert it are uh, connected to the ac bus or grid and the dc part is converted through a converter which dc to ac connected to the ac bus and then from that you can have a basically towards the main grid or a transmission line the power flow between the networks and the utility grids are controlled through power electronic converters or inverters the power direction is subject to the balance between load and generation definitely <laughs> aim of constructing hybrid microgrid is improving the overall efficiency of the network that they include minimize conversion stages increases reliability reduces interfacing devices and reduces energy costs having said that you have also an operational mode that is islanded mode and grid connected mode with controller so islanded mode microgrid with controller is what a power line solid line is for trading the required electrical power the communication line dash line is for trading the trading control and status information that is data assimilation i should say the central controller has many features for proper coordination of distributed energy resources as per their power generation capacity to serve the critical and non critical loads so from the figure as you can see that we have the single ac bus we are being connected through these uh, basically ac to dc converters for solar but it is i should say from dc to ac and residential loads are connected to these buses and you have the power to be generated out here which is being connected through the uh, communication line as well we basically get the data from here and we will have basically <coughs> controlling the entire uh, power generation out from this microgrid controller center they are also being co connected through dotted line to the battery storage system which shows the uh, the present scenario of the battery being stored and therefore uh, ultimately the entire system itself is self sufficient and self reliant uh, although it is connected to the ac bus system the bus system can be islanded that is isolated from the main grid and can be still used for the uh, loads uh, which are of the nearby uh, areas 
supervision and power management for microgrid in different time scale. Uh, we have three types of managements. We are talking about microgrids, long term energy management, medium term energy management and short term energy management. I'll go by the short term energy management, fast dynamic storage availability, balancing power and dispatching harmonic filters uh, and power capabilities of renewable energy sources. This is these all are being happening in milliseconds, actually. So this part takes a very fast role. But having said that, the 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 flow is uh, that is there are there is basically a you know three stages so when i talk about a microgrid if i have a long term management i am talking about load demand forecasting then i have basically uh, renewable energy sources production forecast which is for long term and medium term and i am also talking about energy storage availability how much i have the battery capacity and from there, I have production adjustment, which is basically medium term in some hours. And this is over a day, the forecasting being token taking place. After that, whatever pro production adjustment has been made in the local management part, it is being fed with a power, good quality power that is being taken care of by voltage and frequency uh, regulation instantaneously by the scheduler. And then it is being fed into the decision making part in short term energy management taken care by fast dynamic storage availability being fed from this end and power capability of the renewable energy sources fed from this end balancing power and dispatching harmonic filters or filterings being done so that the entire supervision and power management microgrid in different time scale can be made <clears throat> what we are trying about is here is what my uh, research work is is all about and i am working on these areas only and mostly i am between the hourly seconds and milliseconds area where i speak for because i mean today's lecture also i'm going to speak for the uh, uh, microgrid being used and renewable energy penetration being used for peak load saving so when, when you are talking about peak load uh, shaving or peak load management we are talking about something with to respect to hours seconds and milliseconds so this is where the mid term energy management and short term energy management comes into effect so there are three levels we're talking about primary level secondary level and tertiary level where control uh, is being used in hierarchical methods uh, in terms of the time scale a milliseconds seconds and minutes to hours or so to days and the functions are nothing but to primary voltage and frequency control active and reactive power sharing balance control this is from the storage actually can be done and islanding detection has to be done immediately when there is a fault occurring or maybe overloading or even there is a uh, there is issues with the sustainable stability of the or the, there is a transience in the microgrid itself in the, therefore it has to be taken in a time scale of milliseconds to seconds uh, decision making therefore this is basically uh, of islanding detection and further enhancing the situation and taking control of that such kind of control functions will be working in the primary level in the secondary level you have voltage and frequency steady state deviation compensation power quality control uh, with uh, real time optimization techniques grid connected or islanded mode transition control and demand side management including load shedding this is in seconds and minutes and hours this is a secondary level basically microgrid fluctuations or control i should say hierarchical levels followed by the tertiary levels which is in minutes hours and days microgrids or microgrid bidirectional power flow control and coordination multiple micro uh, mg clusters coordination so you have a lot of microgrid being formed in the network and then all these microgrids which are having different types of renewable energy resources feeding to the local loads as well as feeding to the grid on a minutes and hourly and day basis needs a coordinated eff uh, effort and again that needs you know uh, intelligent uh, smart energy management system which can take care of n number of microgrid to taken in a cluster over a region of maybe over 50 square kilometers and then determining the power requirements and the demand profile checking the peak load power at the point in morning session and in the evening part and thereby deriving out how much power can be you know fed into the grid from these kind of renewable energy sources on the basis of minutes and seconds and hours in the secondary level and checking for the primary level for seconds therefore the flow from the tertiary level to the primary level becomes more smoother in terms of control function so <clears throat> you can see that this kind of you know system or intelligent uh, microgrid system is mostly uh, used for peak load management or load management or demand side management mostly into peak power hours <clears throat> yeah this is what i was talking about so the microgrid is an aggregation of unit representing as a 
generation of loads which requires appropriate EMS. And uh, the EMS is nothing but energy management system. Its operational objectives is to manage the variable, variable sources based on the electricity market and the demands, and thereby uh, deciding about the import export with the grid costs and the carbon footprint part as well as emission, and thereby uh, scheduling the distributed generation resources uh, for the better usage. So thereby uh, the microgrid management system becomes a, basically a representation of both the generation and the load management part taken together. This is basically a schematic given as a centralized control architecture. So you have e-vehicles, you have energy storage system, you have distributed energy resources, and you have point of common coupling to the main grid. And above, above that, you have basically the business build, 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 building part, which basically has the household and the commercial part. And taking into all account, you can see there's only one controller, which is microgrid central controller. This should be central, actually. And this basically uh, takes care of the microgrid control scheme how it has to uh, be used, when it has to be used, when the power inflow has to be made, whether it will be cost effective or not. We have to propose a dynamic tariff. We have, I, I really, I should speak for in this point of time that we have been doing researches in these areas and we have a lot many you know, papers and research papers being published. People who are working under me, we are working on these areas. We have developed schemes where such kind of, uh, with usage of dynamic tariff system, uh, time of usage of the power supply being uh, being figured out and depending upon the availability of renewable sources and entirely taking care of the voltage and frequency and other mitigations of the system, we basically try to control having the microgrid form in the form of a small microgrid in a localized space. And then the microgrid clusters are made having five, five ten microgrid, small microgrids being together in a bus system, maybe an IEEE bus system of 14 bus system or maybe a higher bus systems. <clears throat> and we have already uh, published papers in these areas where we are very, really, uh, I should say, very successfully have uh, implemented such schemes where the power uh, management uh, or the control scheme has been tested with different AI applications, which I'll be just uh, finishing off and I'll be telling you all. So, uh, yeah, I'll not go by this. So therefore, uh, you have basically a comparison of the different architecture for microgrid control system. What are the features we're talking, looking forward for? Reliability, centralized controller, single point of failure, communication burden, unit coordination, implementation difficulty, flexibility, and computational cost. Having said that, you can see the centralized has the, these are the basically advantages, I should say. <laughs> Whereas uh, it has a very low reliability, but it has high centralized control, it is a high, I should say, single point failure. Uh, it is it is being centralized from one part. So it has a, uh, <coughs> I should say, accessibility to that. Communication button, yeah, a lot of communication been taking place from the centralized part. Unit coordination also has to be made from the centralized part. Implementation difficulty, it is easy to do from the centralized part. Flexibility is very less. Yeah, you have to be in the center and depend on the decentralized part. And from the decentralized part, you go to the distributed part. You can see this comparison takes a view of the architectures of the microgrid control system from the single unit to the cluster of microgrids and finally to the centralized unit where it is connected to a bus system. So entirely the complication can be seen, but it eases out the kind of power handling requirement was there when we may we have compared it with a thermal power plant. The thermal power plant where you dig out the mud and you just take out the coal and then you treat the coal transmit it to the power plant and then unload it, then you know treat it and pulverizers and all, and then you go by the belt conveyors and it goes for firing. Then you have the water treatment and then you fire it and steam is generated. That superheated steam is being fed into the turbine and the turbines rotates. Then you have mechanical part and then it goes for generator. And then the generator starts giving you the power and that being transferred, transmitted over a long transmission line. And then it reaches the 132 kV line or I should say substations, then 33 kV, then 11 kV, 6.6, .6, and ultimately to 440 volts, or 220. So much of, you know, big network involvement of, I should say, uh, infrastructural development and things. Whereas when you think about a microgrid, the renewable energy being focused at a clustered center of load, the load growth can be, you know, which we are doing right now, the load growth can be basically addressed. You can have a forecasting by AI techniques, Based on the load growth profile over an year of an area, you can basically design a microgrid 
comprising of the available renewable energy sources or if you have lot many microgrids nearby you can cluster them out and over the period of 12 months that is over a period of one year over different seasons over different usage of power you can basically deliver this kind of loads from the localized renewable energy sources by either being in islanded mode or maybe in a collective manner feeding it to the grid so that the major part of the grid is fed from the renewable energy sources and thereby a larger section of the load can be really catered through which can be either uh, it can be a domestic load it can be public lighting it can be agricultural load or for that matter it can be commercial load i won't say about industrial load or traction load let's not talk about that but even after having said that those four kind of loads that i talked about that is agricultural uh, public lighting domestic and uh, commercial you can see a larger chunk of the power can be basically fed through and therefore when this kind of power comes into picture it happens to have that this sector of the load plays an important role in basically designing the, uh, the profile for peak power so there were i will actually skip this part the major concern of power system stakeholders a major concern of electricity utilities are peak load management optimized revenue collection environmental concerns generation capacity margins overall losses minimization real time monitoring control followed by system stability competitive markets and reliable uh, primary supplies major concerns of electricity consumers you can see it's been written out there uh, i will go by a bit faster because i'm getting shortage of time now i can sense that uh, distributed power sharing power network microgrids uh, yeah microgrids as energy distribution systems are becoming very popular connecting several micro uh, uh, grid to mutually support each other provides flexibility and support for each microgrid during disturbances in systems or in ca in the some cases of microgrid experience generation deficit the goal of making these so called multi microgrid clusters is to improve stability reliability and reduce load shedding in individual microgrid areas so this is what we are talking about that is basically a distributed pattern of clustered microgrids which is a very recent trend in the research and being being uh, initiated by the academics and the research areas utility sectors <laughs> because this is going to be the future of uh, the power you know generation and distribution sector in india in the next 10 15 years from now uh, when we talk about all these and having said about that these are inevitable how it is being used is of a important aspect <laughs> we would be basically using these kind of powers to basically take care of the peak load now the infrastructural agriculture and industries and the power sectors are the major uh, stakeholders in the economic development of a country and uh, how to manage the peak load in such cases and minimize the load shedding or power cuts and having a better voltage and frequency uh, uh, sustainable uh, output is of an important aspect and the the reliability and security associated with these kind of annual peak loads uh, are being taken care by renewable energy and load management system uh, the reuse the uh, use of renewable energy for addressing this peak load management in a centralized or local way can be led can lead to a substantial reduction in cost and stress on the grid so how do we do that the load management concepts the types of load management techniques has few namely as valley filling peak clipping load shifting strategic load growth strategic conversation and flexible reliability now i'll talk about uh, load shifting involves shifting of peak loads to off peak hours strategic conversation reduction of utility loads more or less equally during almost all hours of the day flexible reliability interoperable agreements by utility to alter customer energy consumptions on as a needed basis that's what i was talking about in that part of the section when you go to office just you know you tell your uh, people that you are interested to uh, take power at this point of time so what you can do is basically uh, go back to your office and when you come back to home you can again take the power so that is a flexible reliability so this is a very basic thing of you know just having an idea of what is a peak load profile and how peak load showing is done so there is a clipping there is a conservation there is a load building a valley filling flexible load shifts and load shifting okay what is peak shaving a shaving generally refers to a level of a leveling out peak use of utility by industry and commercial power consumer it is a process of reducing the amount of energy purchased from utility companies during peak hours 
now it is not only from the utility companies but also from the uh, microgrid sectors if you talk about because energy uh, uh, exchange uh, is something that has come up in india and they are looking forward for the renewable energy sources generation and its usage during peak hours and they are also doing that it is possible by temporarily scaling down the industrial production or the household consumption activating on a, an on site power generation system applying energy shifting or relying on a battery a uh, peak saving strategy with solar and uh, energy uh, you know storage systems we are talking about uh, this is something to do with the alternative uh, part how sometimes altering the load profile by load shifting can be difficult in such cases supplement power can be supplied to avoid peak load demands on conventional grid and additional power can come from alternative sources such as renewable energy energy storage generator sets and or power plants uh, with on site storage batteries charge at the lowest cost uh, batteries then discharge in the peak load periods thus causing peak load reduction this strategy allows to save on electricity bill on three different levels one is avoid penalties due to peak power demand excess negotiate with the utility the new maximum demand which will become lower than before and discharge the battery with electricity bought at the lowest rate so you can see this is what we basically save on the electricity bills uh, on the three levels that we talked about by doing the peak saving with solar and the battery storage uh, having said that i'll just uh, go for the demand response so the demand response is something which is very important which is taken care by the incentive based program and the time based rate program which we talked about so the ibp and the tbr the ibp basically reflects five parts the direct load a uh, control the interruptible uh, curtailability the capacity market demand bidding and emergency planning and time based rate program talks about the real time pricing time of use and the critical peak pricing these two are being classification of demand response programs because demand happens to be a major part this profile basically is where we are talking about this is the area which we are talking about the peak demand area which we need to uh you know really work for to manage this to clip off this based on what we are being speaking right now so this can be done and we need therefore we need in order to you know get into this all this business we know need to basically shift to dependability on uh basically ai based systems for load management and peak load reduction which are basically on are, are classified into the following techniques decision trees is a machine learning model in which classification decisions are divided into two sets of choices depending upon the features of the input parameters which are considered individually the process starts from base features and then progresses in a manner resembling a tree branch a random forest and extension of machine learning is a random forest which uses uses classification and regression tasks and incorporates multiple decision trees to improve the prediction accuracy mostly in forecasting these are used and the decision making is used trees are used in decision making part followed by wavelet uh, neural networks naive based these are basically ai based techniques uh, another a more machine learning model at, that combines the concept of wavelet analysis and neural network architecture the wavelet concept stems from the generation of fourier transform and windowed fourier transform wft and ft are uh, taken together for uh, the prediction and decision making when and how to manage the load either by shifting the load to the off peak period or by reducing the demand or by catering the demand from the renewable energy sources and based on the available uh, renewable energy sources storage in the storage capacity and as well as uh, flexible yet robust i should say uh, time based uh, tariff system uh, which is on use uh, artificial neural networks are widely used in modeling nonlinear processes nn have been broadly used to utilize to forecast electricity consumption and the cooling and the heating of loads in buildings one of the advantage of this method is that it is it is it can detect nonlinearity between the input and output data set real time monitoring is also possible using the nn method regression auto regression multiple linear regression is a machine learning model based on statistical linear regression it is widely used in several studies to predict the monthly heating and cooling demands of residential buildings genetic algorithm fuzzy logic i have worked in my phd time with genetic algorithm and fuzzy logic part uh, they have been a really a uh, good tool 
in handling the peak power management and peak load reduction, I should say. <laughs> These are again uh, also some of the names which we uh, look forward for particle swarm optimization and K nearest uh, neighbor. Uh, KNN, I should uh, can tell out and is performed based on memorizing the training set and then predicting the level of, of any new instance based on the levels of its closest neighbors in the training set. KNN is widely used in building energy management system and in demand analysis of energy consumption in a residential building. These are localized solution system for based on AI. And we need, as I told you, there are three hierarchical parts. One was in micro and millisecond, one was in a day to hour, two minutes. And there was one long term, which was basically towards the 12 months. So KNS never basically comes into picture when it is basically instantaneous on a local load part. Uh, yeah, principal component analysis. PC is a machine learning model used for dimensionality reduction. Dimensionality reduction is the process of mapping a function from higher dimension space into a uh, uh, lower uh, space and hybrid models. Uh, hybrid models are basically use multiple machine learning techniques. One at a time is not used. N number of maybe two, three machine learning processes are used. One can be used for data handling and pre-processing. One can be used for optimization. Another can be for prediction. One can be for decision making. It's a cluster of different AI techniques taken together for one microgrid or n number of microgrid working together hand in hand for peak load reduction or load management. Uh, this uh, is this has been used. This particular fuzzy Bayesian technique is used uh, in my case of PhD research. I have been uh, I have done this part, so I just thought of sharing my part of the research a little bit, just to make you all understand that yes, it is possible, and people are doing. I know uh, faculty members who are present here who are interested in these field are, are are always aware of what I was speaking till now, and master degree students and UG students, if they are present, they are also having uh, a little bit of you know understanding of what I spoke for. But I thought that I'll just share a bit of my uh, uh, part of the contribution to this part of the field of engineering or research. And what we did is that we took a few states, as I spoke about few states before. I took around five, six states together whose uh, peak load being profile were being you know, uh, analyzed. <laughs> Datas were collected. And from that, we used fuzzy Bayesian and fuzzy synthetic evaluation methods where, where we did uh, some uh, you know demand pattern and the load type and the time of usage of these loads in a month, in a day, in a year. And from that, we determine which load are to be supplied and which are to be supplied later when prioritizing the loads over a period of 24 hours during the peak hours mainly and stretch it out such that the entire process can be taken care based on the climate, weather and duration of the day and the work culture of the humans in those regions and how far they are being you know, uh, separated from one region to another region so that Locally, the power can be, you know, handled and being given to the hotspot within the network where the growth is higher and we can supply power at that point, focus our concentration of, you know, <laughs> quenching the peak power demand that point more and somewhere down the line after maybe 20, 15, 30 hour minutes later, <laughs> some other part of the uh, uh, geographical location can have a power requirement that can be taken care later on. So that, that way, uh, my uh, work was being, uh, you know, uh, fuzzified, I should say. And uh, we, 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 we took a lot of states together and they, they were given certain criteria on the basis of which they had, there, was a, there was basically a, a fight, I should say. There was a competitive bid. And the one which got a high scoring will have a high priority of power supply, whereas the low scoring loads can be basically shedded off from the grid or can be supplied from renewable energy sources by microgrids or distributed generation sources which are smartly handled. Just now I spoke for a long time now. So this is a prelude which I did before and now what I'm doing in my research work through my research scholars are the later on stages where I'm applying the AI to basically get into the decision making part and to make understand how to effectively reduce the peak demand <laughs> by managing the resources well. Uh, yeah, we did it by fuzzy. Later on, we also have done it by ANN and PSOs. Uh, we have done it successfully. We have papers with us and uh, a smart grid enabled conversation for voltage reduction technology for peak demand reduction. Smart grid enabled CVR system for volt bar control operations can be used to achieve peak load demand and energy consumption in distribution network. To implement this scheme, the smart grid has to be equipped with assets such as 
volt bar optimization control and advanced information and communication technologies the fundamental concept of cvr is lowering the delivering voltage into lower half of the tolerance bandwidth without affecting the performance of end users devices and additional reactive power injection might require to reduce system losses uh, volt bar compensation technique for managing peak demand in smart grid is something that we are looking forward for we are doing work in that as well uh, we also have genetic algorithm for peak, peak load reduction where we need the historical data of electrical load consumption log with tariff is obtained from utility altitude load curve is drawn inversely proportional to the tariff genetic algorithm inputs are being taken from previous two steps load shifting is done to match a desired load curve execution of ga to obtain cost and peak load reduction which mutually benefits the consumers and utility having having said that the 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 uh, regional load management system comes into effective so you have a six bus system or a 14 bus system or, or a higher bus system you basically incorporate the normal system then you have the microgrid in, being put out there with the distributed generation sources fed into all these sources part and then the loads are being grown profile are being developed and then you develop an ai based controller scheme which takes care of your requirement chases the demand and while chasing the demand wherever there are hot spot the microgrid makes a cluster out there it sustains the load requirement for around 20 30 minutes again there is a new hot spot after 20 30 minutes localized then again the microgrid cluster changes and the change microgrid cluster again resumes its services at that point of the hot spot in that way the entire grid is being taken care smartly where there is a renewable energy penetration and thereby having a better utility of the loads therefore and the resources therefore analyze the load consumption patterns region wise namely urban rural and semi urban obtain the renewable energy generation capacity of each region prioritize the loads to receive power from renewable energy predict the day ahead consumptions and renewable energy generation for the region a and uh, reschedule the loads according to priority to match the renewable energy uh, generation resulting in peak load reduction and formation of regional microgrids using the above mentioned methodology this system the fuzzy system and the uh, auto regression methodologies we have already used and in in my case of research i can tell you that this has been successfully implemented and we have research papers in these domains which you can go through whenever you just write down my name in the uh, domain areas you can uh, get it through so you will find it very interesting and we have been doing that with this i conclude my talk it was quite long but boring i don't know it was informative or not but i have concluded my lecture and i hope uh, everybody uh, have uh, you know been benefited with that topic i spoke spoke for uh, thank you everyone thank you thank you sir so it was a uh, great platform for us to get a such informative session uh, from you sir i'll request the participants if they have any questions to ask participants if you have any questions to ask you may ask our speaker we will share the um, sir um, email id with you all uh, for further uh, correspondence so if you have you can you can ask um ma'am i can't hear you all i mean like can it be a bit louder okay so am i audible yeah, sir, yeah, am no, i audible I yeah, yeah, okay. yeah it's okay. microphone okay. yeah i can see yes yes, yes. yes. please yes. Sorry, sir. if anyone has any query to ask me can just go ahead uh yes participants if you have any queries if you, uh, you may generally ask don't they don't have because they want to run away that i understand because <laughs> no, 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 i am no, a listener sir. i also so they will always have me you said because all have got uh, they have certain queries i could find out that later on we receive mails emails from them yeah yeah, yeah. The that is always email. always most uh, acceptable so way of doing things yeah. everybody is busy and people who are in the academics have always workload in the daytime during the college hours but attending fdp is also something that you enhance your knowledge or your yes. brush up your knowledge and uh, if anybody has any query can just you know write down to yes. pardon ma'am uh, we get focused on new domains uh, yeah 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 that's it, that's it that's it no that's why i'm telling that people can actually write down uh, to the organizers and they can pass on 
or mm-hmm. the organizers i can request you all to please pass on my email id also if required or my yes, sir. number sure so that if anybody has any query can come forward and just ask from me if i am I... able to deliver that query i don't yeah. say that i am an expert in the every matter but mm-hmm. okay i try my best okay sir uh, sir a small <coughs> token of uh, appreciation from uh, dr bc rai group of Inst- institutions sir and just sharing with you sir so i will share it in uh, soft copy also sir uh, is it visible to you sir yeah it is visible to me yeah so th- I, I i it's an honor for us uh, particularly department of electrical engineering and uh, that we have you as a speaker today sir so thank you sir and we look forward for such session in near future also sir sure 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 why not why not we i will be looking forward to get associated with your college as well and i do hope that we can motivate some new uh, you know pg students if you have pg course in, B- in bcr yes, yes sir yes sir electrical department is having sir mtech so uh, i think student. i think pg students should 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 come forward for such kind of endeavors where pg students should come forward and you know and get in hand in hand with the people from jeu and other places and work Nicola together with teachers out there so that in the, the, they can have an exposure mm-hmm. And even teachers can get uh, in touch with uh, people like uh, us and uh, teacher to teacher common friendly platforms are always most welcome for research domain. So definitely push most welcome. You can always initiate such initiatives. Thank you, sir. Thank so you. get platforms. Are you? Thanks for the so, support that. So I, I, am I am I am I uh, really given a uh, permission to leave? I mean yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, okay. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank Thanks you, for uh, joining us. Sir, uh, send the soft copy. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Email. It was a thank pleasure. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Raghavan sir, for being with us for such a long time, sir. Thank, oh, you, thank sir. you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll request all the participants to kindly fill up the feedback uh, link. I request all the participants to kindly fill up the feedback link. Is uh, we will share with you in the uh, FDP WhatsApp group. We have the next session that will be in the offline mode. Though it will be shared in the, it will be in the hybrid mode. We will be sharing it in in the YouTube live also. It will be uh, starting at. It will be starting. Yes, sir. We will. Uh, yes, sir. We will certainly mail you. We will certainly mail you the feedback link. We'll certainly mail you. All the faculties will get a individual mail sharp at two o'clock. Uh, Kindly fill up the feedback link. It will be an overall feedback link today, and based on that data, we are going to get the certification will be awarded to you all. So kindly, uh, please fill up the feedback link properly, sir. I request all the participants. You will receive the link by two o'clock today, and the next uh, session will start at twelve thirty today. We will have Professor Dr. Shantanu Paul from. night to durgapur this will be in a hybrid mode it will be the session live will be in mm. youtube live will be shared with you all right at 12:30 thank you participant for joining us today we are the we have the last session uh, thanks for being with us on behalf of dr bc rai group of institution particularly department of electrical engineering we are really thankful to all the participant for being with us for this couple of days thank you in case of any query you may di- uh, you may directly mail to uh, to me we have the we have shared the email id kamalika.tiwari@bcrc.ac.in is given in the chat box also for the correspondence you may mail me thank you thank you sir all for joining us